Today we're going to look at creating menu items for RAD menu at runtime. RAD menu is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. Sometimes it's not enough to have static menu items in your application. In this video we will explore creating items for RAD menu at runtime. This will give your application the flexibility it needs when your users demand it. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So we're just going to begin with going File, New, Project. We're on Visual C Sharp, Silverlight, and then RAD Control Silverlight Application. And I'm just going to give this the name of RAD Menu at Runtime TTV and press OK. On the next screen, we're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website, and we're also going to be using Silverlight version 5. The next screen that appears is our project configuration wizard. I'm just going to scroll down just a tad here, and I'm going to place a check in telerik.windows.controls.navigation, because that is where RAD menu lives, and we can see that it automatically checked the dependent resource for us as well. After that, we'll go ahead and hit the finish button and our Silverlight 5 project will begin spinning up. Now that our application has finished spinning up, I'm just going to go underneath our references here and point out that Telerik.windows.controls and Telerik.windows.controls.navigation was automatically added to this project for us. And if I scroll up just a little bit here, we'll see that our Telerik XML namespace has been added for us as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in some of the images that I know we're going to be using in this project. So I'm just going to simply do right click, add, new folder, and I'm going to type in images here. I already have images created for this sample, so I'm just going to go add existing item and we're just going to select all of these images and select add. Now once that's in place I'm going to go ahead and select them all and change the build action here to content. Now that that's in place we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a class and we're going to call this class menu item and now we'll hit the add button. So inside of this class that we just created we're going to drop in a couple of different properties here. So I'm going to fix our using statements very quickly by using a productivity add-in called just code. We look under our constructor, we have a this.subitems of our menu item. It's going to be a new observable collection of our class menu item. We have a text property that is a string, an icon URL that's a URI, and then an icon that is an image that's going to return some new image. And then finally we just have an observable collection that's going to be our sub items. Now that that's in place I'm going to switch back over to my main page.xaml and right before the grid I'm going to add in uh, user control dot resources. So the first thing that you may notice here is that we have Telerik defined and then hierarchical data template. So the data displayed in the RAD menu has a hierarchical structure. This is similar to the RAD tree view. This means that each item may come with a set of items or its own. For that reason you have to use the hierarchical data template. This is created by Telerik and all you have to do is reference it here. You can go ahead and you can give it a key and then finally an item source. And the item source is going to be the sub items. Then you'll see a Telerik container binding dot container bindings with a binding collection and that collection is going to be set to a property name of icon and then it's going to be binding on our icon. Finally you'll see just a regular text block that's binding just to the text and then a couple of closing tags here. The only thing we'll need to do now is go back down into our grid and we'll need to define our rad menu. So we have added a rad menu. We've gave it a name of rad menu. The vertical alignment is set to the top. Orientation we've set to horizontal. I showed you in the second part of the series how to change that to a vertical. And then we've defined our item template here to a static resource 
of menu item template, which was defined right here. Now let's go ahead and let's add code behind. So we're going to have a method here that's going to get the menu items, and this is going to be an observable collection. Again, I'm just going to do a control shift U to fix our using statements here. So we have our get menu items, we have an observable collection of just items, and then we have another observable collection of file sub items. So we're going to begin by creating a couple of new menu items. We're giving it our icon URL and text, and then we're adding it to our file sub items. And if you scroll on down, you'll see we have added our new file. We've added another one called open, and then finally one called save. And then we've added two or three more named file, edit, and view that doesn't have any image associated with it. And then it's just going to return those items. So if we scroll back up and underneath our this.initialize component, we could simply go this red menu dot item source is going to be equal to a this dot get menu items and that should wrap up what we would need to do for this application. So if we go ahead and we run our application, our application will launch and then up at the top you'll see we have our red menu with its items that have been defined at runtime. So I hope this video helped and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Thank you.